Advanced technology from Honda. Achievements that come from attempting the impossible. From pressing forward with research and development, no matter how challenging the goal. The can-do spirit behind these efforts has made Honda a household name around the world. It's a spirit inspired by company founder Soichiro Honda, and one that continues to thrive today. Now let's take a closer look at the Honda spirit in action and see how it has changed the face of car making. Honda dates back to 1948 when young Soichiro Honda started a small auto shop employing 20 people. A talented engineer, Mr. Honda was committed to keeping abreast of the latest technologies. By the age of 15, Mr. Honda was already aware of the impact that automobiles would have on the future. He moved to Tokyo to work in an auto repair shop. Cars were still uncommon in Japan and expertise in automobile engineering was rare, yet Mr. Honda threw himself into his studies and by the age of 17 had produced his first racing car. At 22, Mr. Honda started his own parts factory but the piston rings he produced did not meet the manufacturer's standards and he came close to losing everything. The experience convinced him that he needed to improve his skills, so he began attending classes at a local engineering school. Mr. Honda was not only an innovator, he was also a hard worker. Through trial and error, he finally produced parts that met manufacturer specifications. The post-war period was chaos for Japan. Public transportation systems were strained beyond capacity. Buses and trains bulged with people. Others faced the situation with desperation, but Mr. Honda took it as a challenge. He reasoned, if people had bicycles powered by engines, they could move more freely. He experimented by mounting a generator engine on a used bicycle. Bata Bata sound made by this motorized bicycle was the inspiration for its unusual name. The Bata Bata was Mr. Honda's first hit product. It also marked Honda's transition from auto parts to motorcycles. In 1948, the Honda Motor Company Limited was formed. Honda quickly grew into one of Japan's leading motorcycle manufacturers, producing a stream of bestsellers. The Super Cub was released in 1958, Honda's 10th year in business. Setting new sales records, it established Honda as Japan's undisputed leader of the motorcycle industry. Honda was innovative in all facets of business, including product distribution. A special truck that could transport 84 motorcycles at a time dramatically sped delivery. Behind Honda's rapid success was a motivated team of people united by a single cause. Their shared goal was to enter and win the Isle of Man Tourist Trophy Grand Prix, the Olympics of motorcycle racing. Mr. Honda had set this ambitious goal just five years after starting his business. It was a bold move, 
Mr. Honda had no track experience and little reason for confidence, but his associates were inspired by this ambitious goal. Within a limited time frame, they had to stretch the limits of both performance and safety. Honda's first entry in the race earned the Constructors' Championship. In his third year, it dominated both the 125 and 250cc classes. And in 1966, it was the undisputed champion in all classes from 50 to 500ccs. Racing brought prestige, but there was another benefit. The technology developed for racing became a key factor in the success of Honda's commercial motorcycles. Mr. Honda referred to racing as a mobile laboratory. Involvement in racing allowed associates to develop a respect for logic, ideas, and time. They also came to understand the importance of thinking for themselves and acting as individuals within the framework of a team. Honda has always taken pride in its technology. But it's not technology that Honda sells. Honda firmly believes that technology is a tool to build better lives for people. Technology is not an end in itself. Honda also values both its customers and the Honda associates that serve them. This conviction forms the heart of the Honda principle of respect for the individual. Associates are encouraged to act independently as they see fit. All are given equal opportunities regardless of nationality, gender, or educational background. This basic Honda philosophy can be seen at work in the All Honda Idea Contest for Honda Associates. Regardless of their position within the company, associates are encouraged to submit innovative ideas. The results are often startling and even amusing. One such innovation is the Magic Staff with its 30cc engine for people who can't roller skate. Or this bike without an axle, a unique adaptation of the conventional bicycle. Or these giant wheels that need two people to get them rolling. Dynamic transportation indeed. Such creativity has been the key to Honda's growth. Honda sums up its commitment to innovation with two principles. Imitating others doesn't result in anything, and never be afraid of failure in the pursuit of progress. The unprecedented success of the Super Cup established Honda as the unrivaled leader in the motorcycle industry. But the Honda of today began with the decision to build cars. Why was Honda, a latecomer to the automobile industry, able to expand so rapidly? To answer this question, we must return to the early 1960s. This was a time when the Japanese economy was growing at a phenomenal rate, and the public was looking for reasonably priced entry-level cars. Mr. Honda was not a man to follow convention. His approach to car making was very unique and far-sighted. His experience with motorcycle racing on the Isle of Man had convinced him of the importance of racing as a mobile laboratory. It was this insight that prompted him to build Japan's first racing course, the Suzuka Circuit. He believed that an international class racing course was vital if his company was to develop cars. Such a course would also nurture the entire Japanese auto industry to grow and become more competitive. Others didn't share his enthusiasm. Despite widespread skepticism, however, Mr. Honda pushed ahead with construction. Considerable time went into studying major European circuits and consulting experts before the design was finalized. In 1962, Honda became the first car maker in the world with its own racing course. The world-class circuit would motivate Honda associates to aspire to new feats of engineering prowess. These inspired engineers eagerly awaited the day when a car they had built would race there. 
On this first foray into automobiles was a sports car with a high-performance race-bred engine. The S360 debuted at the 1962 Tokyo Motor Show where it created a storm of attention. But the public had to wait until October 1963 for Honda's first commercial sports car, the S500. Despite its small 500cc engine, the S500 outperformed any 1000cc compact on the road. Within three months of the S500's debut, Honda introduced another car with a larger engine, the S600. And in October 1965, Honda released the S800. At nearly 100 horsepower per liter displacement, the S800 established Honda as a sports car innovator. However, it was Honda's entrance into Formula One, the apex of auto racing, that truly gave an edge to the company's car making. The challenge of Formula One fired the enthusiasm of Honda associates. Winning was not the sole goal for the Honda team. Rather, racing was considered a mobile laboratory where engineers honed their skills. Nonetheless, victory came fast and easy. In 1965, only its second year on the circuit, Honda took home the Mexican Grand Prix. The winning Formula One machine was put on display later that year at the Tokyo Motor Show. Beside it was a prototype of another Honda vehicle. The meaning was clear to everyone. Honda was ready to apply advanced Formula One technology to passenger cars. One year later, in 1966, Honda's N360 lightweight car was to revolutionize the entry-level automobile market. The N360 offered inexperienced drivers stable handling at high speeds and in all driving conditions thanks to an innovative configuration. It boasted an innovative front engine, front drive layout. The compact, lightweight, high-performance all-aluminum engine and the transmission were positioned sideways instead of lengthwise. The N360 was the first lightweight car in Japan to use this platform. It also offered unprecedented roominess for a lightweight car and at a price tag well below that of competing cars in its class. The N360 quickly captured the top share of the Japanese car market. Within four years, Honda had produced 700,000 of these cars to keep up with the market. The low end of Japan's car market changed in the 1970s, shifting from lightweights up to compacts. For Honda, the focus moved to developing a new benchmark car for people of the world. The car's development represented one of the biggest challenges for Honda engineers. Before even starting development, a detailed analysis of market preferences had to be conducted. The first requirement for this car was to achieve maximum interior space within minimum body size. The idea was to offer the ease of use of a lightweight car with enough space to seat five adults comfortably. Next, drivability and comfort had to be dramatically improved. This was to meet the demands of long distance driving that had opened up with expressway construction. To achieve this, the engineers opted for four-wheel independent suspension in which separate coil springs were attached to each of the car's four wheels. Finally, and most importantly, was the bottom line. The car had to be priced as low as conventional lightweight cars. This meant searching for new ways to cut costs. One way was to share the same production lines as lightweight cars. Two years later, in 1972, the Civic hit the road. For the next three years, it was hailed as the Japanese car of the year. The Civic remains one of Honda's best known and loved models. And in 22 years of production, nearly 10 million Civics have rolled off Honda production lines.
The Civic has continued to be a remarkable car in many ways. Within one year of its debut, it shook up the auto industry with a revolutionary low-pollution engine, the CVCC. The early 1970s saw growing concern over the effects of air pollution, and car exhaust was seen as a major cause. This concern prompted U.S. Senator Edmund Muskie to sponsor a bill that regulated car exhaust pollutants. Compliance with that law, known as the Muskie Clean Air Act, became a prime goal of car makers around the world. Honda was the first car maker to succeed. In concert with development of the Civic, Honda had been working on a new low pollution engine. This was the CVCC. The CVCC not only won Honda fame abroad and earned awards from U.S. government agencies, it also garnered the prestigious Minister's Award from Japan's Science and Technology Agency and prompted other makers to request technical assistance with development of similar engines for their own cars. In 1976, Honda launched the Accord, an upmarket compact model. The Accord employed a CVCC engine, but added such features as power steering and power windows. About 8 million Accords were produced from the first generation model to the fifth generation model. The car's incredible popularity prompted Honda to launch an ambitious project that would have huge implications for the automobile industry of the 1980s. Honda decided to move Accord production to the United States. Many saw the venture ending in failure. Few believed the United States could produce cars of the same quality as Japan. However, the company's conviction that production should be localized remained unshaken. Honda believes that the best way to serve customers is to create cars where they are used. Honda advertised for auto workers in central Ohio. After being hired, all new recruits were required to complete a rigorous training course. Honda then made sure that its American operations, like those in Japan, were guided by the principle of respect for the individual. People working on the production lines were not workers or employees, they were associates. This approach proved particularly effective for strengthening the sense of teamwork among people. When the first Accords made in America, for Americans, and by Americans rolled off the line, they offered the very same quality as those made in Japan. Indeed, American Accords earned such a solid reputation for quality that they're now being exported to Europe, Asia, and even to Japan. The success of the Civic and the Accord brought rapid growth to the company. Honda's focus of production soon swung from motorcycles to automobiles. But one aspect of Honda's activities has never lost any of its importance, research and development. Honda continues to focus its energies on developing new technologies that meet the changing needs of people. When Honda began to make cars, the demand centered on basic performance factors of running, turning and stopping. Demand then swung to a comfortable ride, and from there to style and features of added value. Demand more recently has been shifting in the direction of resource conservation, environmental friendliness, and safety. Let's now look at some of the technologies Honda has developed to meet these demands. Honda's anti-lock braking system, or ABS, was announced in 1982. The system was developed to prevent loss of control when braking suddenly on slippery surfaces, a common cause of accidents. ABS avoids this danger via electronic pumping of the brakes, which automatically prevents wheel lockup and thus maintains steering control. Honda was the first in Japan to develop this safety technology. Honda's four-wheel steering system was announced in 1986. This system steers both the rear and front wheels to deliver high-speed stability and low-speed maneuverability. Honda was the first in the world to make this technology available on a commercial passenger car. The 
the SRS airbag system was announced in 1987. This system employs a sensor which causes an airbag to inflate and protects the head of the driver in the event of a frontal collision. Honda led the field in airbag development and from 1971 spent 16 years on research before the system was perfected. Honda was also the first in Japan to make airbags available for the passenger. Honda announced the development of VTEC in 1988. This revolutionary technology allows two different combustion environments by varying valve lift and timing between the lower and higher RPM ranges. The result is both higher performance and fuel economy in the same engine. VTEC E, a variation on this technology, delivers world leading fuel economy without compromising power. Honda announced its traction control system in 1989. This system employs a computer to control the distribution of torque to the wheels for smoother acceleration from a standing start. In slippery conditions, the system automatically controls engine revolutions to reduce acceleration to a safe level. Traction control is just one example of the unique and intelligent technology that reflects Honda's commitment to safety. In 1990, Honda announced the NSX. This ultralight aluminum-bodied super sports car featured an all-aluminum engine. To produce this dream car, Honda built a special factory just for the NSX, a move that will help make full aluminum recycling a reality. Recycling has remained a concern of Honda since it first began automobile production with lightweight cars in the early 1960s. The NSX was a culmination of these efforts and served as a platform for future advances. Honda announced its navigation system in 1990. A cornerstone of automobile computerization, this acclaimed technology guides the driver through the best possible route to a given destination. Back in 1981, Honda became the first in the world to perfect an onboard position sensing navigation system. This was achieved by utilizing a unique gas rate sensor. The system laid the groundwork for the Honda navigation system, which was announced in 1990. In 1994, Honda announced the advanced new Honda navigation system, combining the onboard position sensing system with a satellite-based global positioning system for accuracy in all driving conditions. Honda was also among the first to investigate the potential of solar-powered cars. Solar cars are built on the premise that society needs to reconsider its dependence on fossil fuel energy systems. Honda's involvement in solar car development clearly demonstrates that the spirit of challenge is still very much a driving force within the company. The Honda Dream, Honda's flagship solar car, is a regular entrant in the grueling World Solar Challenge in Australia. The theme of this trans-Australian race is environmental preservation. In 1993, Honda took first place, attesting to the company's leadership in this emerging field. Honda always sets inspiring goals on which to focus its energies and enthusiasm. 
the company places ultimate value on these goals and on never giving up in the pursuit of achievement. Honda's 50-year history testifies to the great heights of human accomplishment. The many miraculous achievements of Honda have paved the way for a better tomorrow.